What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Well Man's Podcast. My name is Brian Brosey. I'm joined by my friend and co-host, Dr. Keone Tita. Keone, how are you today? Doing good. Hi, everybody. Thanks for listening to us once again. Brian and I are thrilled you're not bored with us yet. So Yeah, or thanks for um, showing up if you're new. <laughs> Even more. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. Um, anyway, uh, we we do love you guys. Listen to us. We want to um, have recommendations. And this uh, episode, we're going to talk about just natural skin health. Um, and this is thanks to you guys out there. We're asking about it. So not that Brian and I are uh, experts on skin, but I, we certainly can give you um, some of the basics on it from both a, a PT perspective and also um, a naturopathic perspective. So Let's let's just get into it. Absolutely. Or you can go to our Instagram or YouTube and judge for yourself if we are experts <laughs> yes, on look, skin. Yes. Yes. <laughs> look at how beautiful my skin is. <laughs> probably um, find that we are not. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, so so th- let's just talk about the basics of skin, right? Um, skin is by far the largest organ in your body. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it has a multitude of things that it does. I mean, it acts as like a waterproofing organ. It insulates from toxins and UV light. uh, The nasty outside world. Yep. Yeah. And right. So it's exposed to the outside world. So the outside world, you're constantly being exposed to stuff, harmful chemicals, um, viruses, bacteria. Um, your skin actually produces some antibacterial substances that actually can help prevent infection. It actually produces vitamin D. We talked a lot about vitamin D on on this podcast, um, which is great for your immune system and also for for your bones. And then your skin is just packed with all these sensory nerves that allow you to sense the temperature, allow you to sense pain, allow you to sense pressure. Um, And then it's just, amazingly versatile and very elastic allows you to move the very interesting thing about skin and this is key for people who want to keep healthy skin is it is derived from the same embryological tissue as your gut so Hmm. and if you think about it your gut and your skin are the organs that are exposed to the outside world so that's where most of your immune system resides because your immune system and your immune cells are all kind of crowded into that area where you're exposed to the outside world, your gut and your skin, and they're constantly sampling that outside world and seeing if what you're getting into is either foreign and needs to be taken care of, or if your body doesn't have any issue with it, right? Yeah, they're the so two systems think about, with bacteria all over them. Yeah, yes, that's right, which, which plays a role in your skin health, right? Mm-hmm. So you have probiotics, we've talked about a lot, all over your skin and definitely all over your your gut and if you wash those things away too much you're you are actually potentially doing damage to your skin and also to your gut so people know this like if they take antibiotics they know that they're basically set off a nuclear bomb in their gut and got rid of all the all the gut bacteria in there and they have to replenish that that's why a lot of docs like myself will uh, recommend probiotics after antibiotic use for at least one to two months yeah. to help kind of reseed and to help stabilize the gut. But I bring that up because usually when there is gut issues with somebody, so constipation, reflux, um, what else? Uh, gastritis, I mean, IBS, whatever. Um, you are more likely because they are derived from the same embryological tissue and they are more likely and they um, are exposed to the outside world. Um, Typically, if you have gut issues, you probably also are going to be more prone to skin issues too, because they're basically one in the same. Yeah, it's fascinating. You say that, Keone. Just this week, I was talking to a friend who uh, who was with with his dad who swears by probiotics and he just started taking probiotics and it cleared up like this redness he had in his skin. So very, yeah, very interesting. So, and so people will come to me with things like eczema and stuff, and I may give them like a digestive enzyme or probiotics. And they're like, you know, they're, they're just not used to that because they're, they're so used to the conventional model where you just get treated with, oh, you have a problem on your skin. Well, here's some cream or steroid cream or, you know, something that will keep you from itching or, or whatever. And it's just symptom management. So you really want to get to the cause. And a lot of times the cause resides in the gut. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's interesting. So yeah, so so probiotics and digestive enzymes and gut restorative nutrients can really uh, help your skin. Now you talked about um, antibiotics. Now what was it? I've heard you know you want to be careful with the types of like creams and face like facial washes that you use. So when you use some of those more synthetic ones, you know what do you think of that? Is it very similar to kind of like using the antibiotic that kind of wipes out your healthy gut bacteria for your skin bacteria? Do you know well, anything about I, that as far as, you know, yeah, people well, yeah, typically so, recommending like the more natural facial creams, deodorants, that kind of right. stuff? No, that's a great question. I, um, some of it is my bias uh, about that issue, but anything you put on your skin, your skin is your largest organ and anything you put on your skin, it's you're exposing that to your immune system and also your skin will absorb it. So if you're putting all this synthetic stuff all over your skin, you're actually that your your body is taking that stuff in. So I recommend to my patients that, you know, if you're going to use any type of cosmetics or deodorants or shampoos and whatever, yeah, you want to make sure you go to a more natural uh, brand of that stuff. Um, and, and when you go to a more natural brand of that stuff, then you are also talking about, you're probably not doing as much harm to the uh, bug flora, right, on your skin or, or even in, in your gut. And so people will be like, well, how, how would I know? Well, there's, there's really a great website out there called um, Environmental Working Group. The website, you can get there two ways. It's www.ewg.org, environmentalworkinggroup.org. And um, it also, you can get there with www.cosmetics with an S database.com. And in that database, you can go in there and it's an, it's an independent uh, company that goes through and ranks all the cosmetics based on you know, how, how good they are for you and what are the synthetics in there? Is there animal testing on there? Are there any, any chemicals in there that are potentially carcinogenic? Are there any chemicals in there that are gonna potentially cause an allergic reaction? Anyway, it's, it's a very simple system. It just green lights like the good products and red lights, you know, the bad products, so to speak. Yeah. And then in between it's, it's yellow, or at least that's the way it used to be. But it, each year it gets, it gets better and better. And I always tell my patients, you know, it's probably a good idea. If you're putting on your, your something on your skin, um, you should probably be able to eat it also, mm. you know? So, so if you're putting something on your skin that is going to poison you, if you eat it, it's probably not great for you. You know, so that's, that's something to think about. That's a little too logical, Keone. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, yeah, it, uh -huh. it is. And a lot of it, and a lot of skin health is just plain common sense, right? Yeah. But, um, you know, you really want to make sure that what you're lathering on yourself um, is not a big deal. You know, it's, it's certainly not going to hurt your gut, gut flora and your skin bugs and all that. It's going to keep the flora stable because that all helps your skin. Um, but also whatever you're putting on your skin, um, for example, like sunscreens, which I, I do think are important, um, because your skin, part of its aging process is from photo damage. So being out in, in the, uh, world out there and not having an appropriate sunscreen or one that has like just crazy chemicals in it that you wouldn't want to eat at all. That's, that's a big problem. So that's part of the reason why sunscreens get bad wraps because a lot of them just have chemicals in there you just do not want on your body. And that's why I really like that cosmeticsdatabase.com website. Yeah, so, we'll put it in the show notes. So by the way, yeah, so, so photo aging due to the sun is a big issue for, for uh, skin, skin damage. And mm -hmm. you know, um, the lighter your skin, the more, the more prone you are to it. So the less melanin you have in your skin, which is kind of acts like a UV shield, the more likely you're going to have, uh, you know, photo photo damage to that. So sunscreens um, are important, especially um, you know if you're going to be out all day, even on a winter day. I mean, even if you're, even during the um, winter, especially if you are, you know, skiing or snowboarding or whatever. As we talked about on our climate uh, change podcast, right? We talk about how the sun just completely gets. Uh, 100% reflected back off the snow. So it goes right, right back up into you, into your face or whatever. So, so you just have to definitely protect your skin. And I, I do think sunscreens are an, an important part of that. You just have to make sure you're getting a good one. 
um, another main issue with skin is, and you can Google this, you can look it up, um, some of the twin studies on this. I gave a talk years back and we basically had uh, people that are smokers compared to um, their twin that are not smokers. Mm -hmm. And you can totally see the skin damage that's mm -hmm. going on for smoke. So smoking is a big deal. Like, mm -hmm. like if you're smoking, you're, you're damaging your skin and you're, you know, and of course you're damaging your internal body also. So th those are big things like do what you can to prevent uh, photo damage or UV light damage, and then also stop, stop smoking. However, one thing that's never talked about is, um, what you know our own natural sunscreen in our skin so what we know based on the research is people that eat high vegetable based diets uh lots of tomato sauce lots of beta carotenes carotenoids in their skin uh, like lycopene we talked about that on our tomato podcast yep this yeah this stuff this stuff is actually a natural sunscreen um, where it will prevent you from getting sunburn and it'll actually preserve your skin. So that's why diet is so important. You can think about diet as supplementing your skin and helping to, uh, you know, help it repair itself um, much, much easier than, than eating a uh, diet that's full of refined carbohydrates and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. I think it was episode 58, the mighty tomato. Yeah. I think go. that's yeah, like the third or fourth time we've mentioned the tomato podcast on a later episode so we'll definitely have to add yep. it to our kombucha drinking game <laughs> <laughs> that's right it's 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 important so colorful you know eat the rainbow of vegetables we talked about that you know i think our salad that we put out there oh, yeah. uh, can certainly help you do that um that is very important now talking about a refined diet right so we mm -hmm. are talking about um you know a refined diet being damaging for the skin on a few podcasts back, we talked well, we talked about it a number of times. But we talked about a blood test called hemoglobin A1C, right? Yeah. And basically, this is a blood test that tests a glycation reaction in the body. And basically, that means sugar molecules binding to proteins and causing damage and inflammation. The higher hemoglobin A1C, the more likely you're going to have uh, damage to the body, um, also to the skin. So that's why we talked about you know making sure to keep your blood sugar levels down. Mm -hmm. um, if you have diabetes, doing what you can to get that number down because it does affect your skin. Um, and we talked about, you know, 5.0 hemoglobin A1C, that or lower is optimal. Um, you're considered pre-diabetic if you're <clears throat> 5. I don't know, 7 to like 6.4 or something. And then anything mm -hmm. above 6.2 to 6.4, you're considered uh, diabetic. And that, that mid-range 5.7 to 6.2 is like pre-diabetic. You want to be below five. Optimally. You want to be below. Yeah. You want to be below five. So, so that's, that's a, a really, really big deal. Um, so, okay. So one thing we haven't talked about, I'm just going to mention it because we talked about it a, a lot on a number of podcasts, but you know, you're the cell membrane, every cell in your body is, is um, made yeah. up of a fatty uh, cell cell membrane, but it's also, you know, your body's made up of fats and water. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you wanted to do one thing to make your skin shiny and healthy is you eat a lot of healthy fats. We're talking about olive oil or fish oil or that type of thing. But also with that, you drink in lots of water and stay well hydrated. So both of those go hand in hand. I mean, your body's is, I don't know, what is it? Like 70, 80% water and every mm -hmm. cell in your cell membrane is made up of fat. And you want to have a good balance of healthy fats and, uh, water and that will translate to to healthier skin. Yeah, absolutely. I was reading through a patient note at the hospital the other day, Q and they were talking about the tinting of the patient's hands due to dehydration. So it just goes, to, you know, obviously the kind of wrinkly or less rebound and recoil to the skin. So obviously tremendous impact on your skin health. Yeah, that's a that's a good way to assess dehydration, right? Pinch your skin on the back of your hand. I mean, it's it gives you an idea. Um, about hydration status. So hydration is, is huge. Another thing um, that is great, and I just call them natural anti photo agers is your spices. And you look at the mm -hmm. research on like uh, uh, high cocoa content diets or Oof. taking turmeric, um, anything like that. Again, this contributes to keeping the skin from um, having all these uh, 
what I call lines of discontentment or, or wrinkles or whatever. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, your spices are huge in that. And actually there are some, some uh, spices that they will actually use in like spas and stuff directly on your skin because it has some benefit like a chocolate mask, a cocoa mask, a turmeric uh, mask, that type of thing. Um, yeah. But all these spices add some benefit to helping quell inflammation and help and stabilize sugar levels in the body. And they are, um, you know, help protect the skin about from toxicants and photo damage. Yeah. And you just so, recommend yeah, people work them into their spices. diet. Yeah. As much as oh, they yeah. can, like you were just saying. Oh, oh yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Now, what about the into. cucumber over the eye, Keone? <laughs> How great yeah, is that? I, see. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know a lot about that, but I think it has some type of uh, stringing effect. Um, you know, a lot of, and it's a cooling effect too. Okay. Um, that may have something to do with it. I mean, you there's, there's so many herbs out there that kind of have that effect, like putting aloe on your skin or, right. or chamomile tea rinses. All those things are, are, are fine um, yeah. to use. I, I just don't know if there's like anything definitive that we can say, oh, you know, yeah, do your cucumber mask or whatever. And mm -hmm. you know, your skin is going to look, be rejuvenated. To me, it seems more like symptoms, symptom management stuff, right? Yeah, which is great. To, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, which, which is great to do. But really what I'm talking about here is how can you preserve your skin and keep it from aging, slowing down the aging process in your skin? And it really comes from common sense stuff and, you know, the healthy diet and exercise um, and yeah. sleep, that type of thing. So that's, that's really where I go with it. Um, I do think there is something to a lot of these spa treatments though, and they certainly can help and, and brighten the skin, so to speak. I'm certainly not one to talk about it or, or to know that much about it. But no, you, speaking you, of exercise, go ahead, go ahead. You, you mentioned aloe, Keone. Do you have, yeah. maybe it's a, a topic we could do all by itself, but do you have like a sunburn aftercare? Living in Florida, obviously as a PT, I see a lot of this, you know, yep. people take their shirts off and you see it on the first, you know, on their back and you yep. may be one of the first healthcare providers to actually see this. Do you have a sunburn yep. kind of aftercare that you, yeah. you yeah. like? There's a lot of, there's a lot of herbs that can really help. Aloe is, is one of them. So we should talk about that on a, on another podcast. Cause that will kind of follow this skin podcast right now. So Perfect. yeah, we could talk about sunburn aftercare. Awesome. And, and how to, how to deal with that. Okay. So exercise, uh, and which we is, know is the detoxifier yeah. of the body. Oh, it, it, it is. And, and how does it work though? What does exercise do? A exercise actually increases blood flow throughout the body and it actually increases blood flow to the skin, bringing vital oxygen and nutrients and minerals to the skin. Um, you know, working out definitely leads to, you know, healthier, brighter looking skin because of that, the, the main aspect of increasing blood flow to the surface. Yeah. So yeah, exercise is, is huge. Um, and, the, and the other thing it does is it also helps support your immune system. So you're less likely, as long as you're not overdoing it, you're less likely to get sick if you exercise on a regular basis. Um, yeah, absolutely. But when we talk about the great lifestyle detoxifier, I mean, they're all great, right? Nutrition, exercise, but sleep, we talked about this on a sleep podcast, sleep is huge. And um, there's a lot of research supporting that old adage, uh, get your beauty sleep. I mean, it is absolutely true. You, they, did, we, I, we, did we talk about studies where they actually took, there are studies where they mm -hmm. actually took people sleep deprived, uh, the same person and then on one night sleep and they compared them and then they had like a the independent group. Yeah, attractiveness and how old they were. Yeah. You know, and they would invariably say the people that didn't get a lot of sleep were older, even though it was the same person. And the people that did were actually it's a younger photo, that type of thing. So sleep, sleep is a big, big deal. Yeah. You can use our podcast as an example. You go through all the YouTube clips and it's like, okay, <laughs> Brian didn't sleep well that day. Keone slept well that day. And then a little bit later, a few weeks go by. Oh, we got some sleep. Uh, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's so that's so true. Um so what about supplements that people use? Some of the big supplements out there for supporting skincare. Well, one of the big ones that's kind of, um, I don't know, it's, it's kind of faddish, but I do think it works to some extent is collagen. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's doing their collagen smoothies, putting it in their coffee and stuff like that. I mean, skin right. is mostly collagen. It's the most abundant protein in your body. Um, 
It helps maintain elasticity in the skin. Uh, and this goes back, you know, the whole concept of, of eating collagen as go, goes back to ancient times, especially in China, where Chinese women viewed collagen, you know, as, as a fountain of youth substance. So, you know, mm. con consuming things with lots of collagen, like what would they be like skin? Um, um, like Do we get this skin. in bone broths and things like that? Yeah, you get it in bone yeah. broths, um, lots of collagen in uh, uh, like pig's feet, animals' hooves, um, shark's fins, like all, all of that stuff. Um, but Have definitely. Had shark's fin before, Kenny? <laughs> never had that. No. <laughs> I was just wondering. Never, never, How about the never pig's had, feet? And, and, never, and, never, and never, never had that either. But um, I'm, I'm sure I had it somewhere along the way in a uh, hot dog somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Excellent point. <laughs> yeah. I take back so, everything I said. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's high content in any type of skins, um, animal skin. Right. And I think so collagen, collagen is, uh, is, is kind of a, a great protein source and, and can help your skin. I, it's not going to be a wow factor. I mean, you just have to stay consistent with it, but it, the reason why I use it in my clinic is just supporting joint, mm -hmm. joint uh, repair and all that. Mm -hmm. and now, Another how do you is, typically have the person take it, Keone? Do they increase just, it in their diet or do they take a supplement, a powder? Because I've seen both, all the above. Do, they, yep, all the above. You can put okay. it in your smoothies. You can put it anywhere. You're not going to get too much of that stuff. Okay. I mean, you just, you know, so it's it's very safe to take. Um, and there are people that just swear by it. Yeah, you know? like you said, it is kind of faddish right now. You just see it all over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, there, I do think there's something to that. Um, another one is uh, hyaluronic acid. It's kind mm -hmm. of kind of related to collagen um again it's involved in repairing tissue um yeah, especially when the skin your joint yeah also good for your joints um helps helps the skin uh repair itself from uh uvb rays um, um also helps with sunburns um so hyaluronic acid is a good one to to use um Probably you're probably getting a little bit of that uh, probably in collagen, but those that's one of the main ones that I I use for joint repair, joint support, and really any of those joint support supplements out there are going to have a secondary effect and benefit in the skin. Yeah, that's great. So even even like your glucosamine sulfates and all that stuff um, will mm -hmm. help that. Uh, another one I see a lot of, and it actually comes in supplement form or can come in lotion form, and that's uh, ceramides. And they're basically, ceramides are like a, a waxy lipid uh, molecule that our bodies make. Um, it's, it's found in high concentrations of cell membrane of, of all eukaryotic cells like our cells. And um, it's, it's basically like our, our natural wax that we make. Um, so you, so that will also um, support, and it, you know, creates a barrier. It helps the skin have a, uh, have a waterproof and barrier. It locks moisture in your skin. It um, kind of smooths out fine lines and, and wrinkles. I just tell people if you're looking for something like that, uh, yeah, so you can take it internally or you can find a lotion that's very high in ceramides. Okay. Um, and that's for, you know, people who are generally looking to improve their skin. But what about people who just have skin that is red, itchy, inflamed, acne, so on and, and so on? Um, we can go back through what we just talked about and, um, you know, improve the diet, improve sleep and all that stuff. But I got to tell you, one of the best things that I've seen and thing that I use in my clinic for helping people get rid of eczema and um, acne of, you know, any type of skin manifestation is using Chinese herbals. And, then, and, you know, especially with angry red skin that is either dry or weeping, like eczema can present like that. We call it in Chinese medicine, like blood heat. One of my favorite formulas is called Romania cool formula. Um, anyway, it's two Fu Ling Sheng Di Huang Hong Wan. And that formula, you can take that, it will clear up skin within almost two weeks of taking it. Now, it's of course, form. you want to make sure it's a Chinese herbal formula. 
Okay. Um, and it, and it will come in like tablets and stuff like that. So, so it's very interesting because I get a lot of people come to my clinic who've been to their dermatologist and stuff like that. And, you know, it's the same thing over, over and over. It's like, okay, here's your anti-itch cream. Here's your steroid, that type of thing. Right. So on and so on without ever really getting to the, to the, you know, the base of the problem. Right. Um, so that's a good one. Another one for like, um, we call it damp heat in Chinese medicine, like uh, skin fungal infections, jock itch, uh, rashes, things like that. Um, there's a formula that's specifically for draining damp heat and that's a Jensen drain fire formula. I mean, these herbal formulas have all kinds of funny, funny names, but it's called Long Don Ji Gong Tang. And that formula I use for that. And these formulas are really good. And then the other form, these are the three formulas I use mostly. And then the other formula I use a lot is mostly for, it's actually this formula, I know people are gonna be interested in this formula because it's actually considered a formula, a beauty tonic for the face, um, but it's especially helpful for clearing acne. And it's called the Margarita Complexion Formula or Zhen Zhu Yu Rong Fong. I think I'm pronouncing that right, sorry. I'm the margarita sorry part is definitely rem yeah, yeah. memorable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, my apologies for, basically messing up the Chinese language there, trying to pronounce it. But anyway, that formula, margarita complexion formula is a, considered a beauty tonic for the face. Now there's many Chinese herbal formulas. You have to fit the formula to the symptoms the person is having. But these are the three main formulas I use in my clinic to help uh, clear skin. Yeah, now specifically a little bit more after the, the last one you mentioned in acne. Is there an age that you wouldn't use a, you know, a Chinese herbal formula like this, Keone? Or are they relatively safe for, you know, a 15, 16, 17 year old who may be dealing with that? They're, they're, they're relatively, they're safe. They're relatively yeah. safe. I mean, there's very few um, contraindications with these formulas. I mean, you, you just, <clears throat> I mean, a lot of it is common sense, but yeah, when you look at the formulas, mm -hmm. um, they're, they're going to be fine. And I've used it quite a bit on uh, teenagers. That, awesome. that want that but teenagers are pretty you know if they're if they will follow the dietary guidelines usually they will yeah. um actually clear it up on on their own um there's an interesting study um gosh i forget i forget his name who who did it it's on tip of my tongue but anyway there's a study a few years back about um looking at modern day hunter gatherers and the adolescents in those populations and then introducing them to white flour and milk. Um, and before the introduction, they had, you know, beautiful, clear skin. And then after the introduction, they had, you know, acne. Um, mm. it, it messed up their hormonal environment or messed up their flora on their skin to where they started getting acne and angry skin. And then they took away these substances and then guess what? Their skin cleared up. You know? And that's how we got the gluten-free movement of today. <laughs> possibly <laughs> possibly um but it does speak to the skin microbiome to some Absolutely. extent right because mm -hmm. because a lot of um dermatologists will say oh you know well it's you know you have clogged pores or you know you your skin is has angry bugs on it so you know we're gonna use a topical antibiotic and stuff and you know that may help clear skin uh, initially but again we're not getting to the true base of what's going on I right. mean, if you're feeding the body lots of refined stuff and food that your body really doesn't need, um, you know, again, most of your immune system is in the skin and your gut is related to that and your skin is going to tell, tell you that it's angry mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. being inflamed or lumpy, bumpy, you know, uh, clogged pores and that type of thing. Yeah. As far as so, people washing their face, Keone, how do you recommend mm -hmm. or what do you recommend they wash their face with or kind of... Do you have a protocol for that? And I'm definitely, it's popping up more and more as I have to wear this mask more and more. No doubt yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the, the protocol is, you know, use natural product. I mean, I, I don't tell people like a, a timeline on that type of thing. A lot of times, you know, um, if you are keeping your, if you're staying hydrated and, and have a, a good uh, diet and you're getting plenty of good and healthy fats in there. Yeah, it's no problem washing your face once or twice a day. Now, there are some times where you want to give it, you know, may may want to give it a, a little bit of a break. I mean, there are some studies that show like constantly washing off the, the bugs off your skin and stuff may make your skin worse over time. But typically, 
with my patients, I don't really go into that unless, unless that whatever they're washing their face with is irritating, is irritating their skin or drying it out. Right. Right. So I really like, like, um, you know, natural soaps and, and cleansers that don't do that. But I, I think it's fine as long as your diet is good. And if you like moisturizers, which really can help, um, putting on your skin again, make sure it's natural. Um, one trick people, uh, dermatologist told me was, you know, if you get out of the shower and you naturally have dry skin, just pat your skin dry and then apply your lotion so that it kind of traps the water in your skin, which hmm. can help you know, smooth out uh, fine lines on your skin and stuff. But I don't know if there's actually a protocol to, you know, you should only wash your face once a week, once a day or whatever. I mean, yeah, it's, it's really, you, you're going to have to play with it, play with the soap and see, see what you say. I just... I, I don't think people will know, like if your skin is excessively dry and stuff, you, you'll know, but typically I don't see a problem with like doing it once a day. There are actually, there are actually skin creams out there that um, now that I'm starting to see uh, that actually have the probiotics in them too. So that's something mm-hmm. else. I, I haven't used them so much in my clinic, but yeah, they actually have the probiotics in there and you can put those creams on. Which again, kind of speaks to that microbiome connection. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, oh, what else? I, you know, one thing I want to mention was, um, I get quite a few people, I don't advertise it, but I get quite a few people coming into my clinic asking for facial acupuncture and it's just hmm. using needles. Um, and typically the way it, it works is, um, from a Chinese perspective by needling the face at a bunch of different points, you're pulling chi, pulling chi to the face, chi and blood to the face from a Western, uh, point of view, you're needling the face, you're creating micro inflammation in the face, kind of like what you do with Botox, but to a much greater extent with Botox, micro inflammation in the face, which brings blood flow and oxygen flow to the face and kind of rejuvenates it. Um, and then you can go even a step further with some of the facial acupuncture and like kind of run the needle into those, uh, you know, lines of discontentment there, your wrinkles and stuff, uh, run them along there to, to kind of uh, build up collagen matrix in there and like uh smooth out the lines so facial acupuncture is uh, a much safer thing to do than botox and some of these other things and um i i use it quite a bit in my clinic when people ask for it yeah and people swear by it you know for brightening up the face and and that's so what, what they're typically coming for keone in that situation yep. is yeah like a botox like effect yep but, you know, we talk about all the stuff that we just talked about, Absolutely. you know, we just go, we go through the basics with, you know, really think about your skin as the largest organ. It is the organ that has most of your immune system there. Um, skin issues can indicate gut issues and vice versa. Um, and you really want to do your best to take care of both. Take care of your gut. You got beautiful skin. Take care of your skin. You'll start having, having a, a healthier gut. It goes both ways. Yeah. Anything else, Keone? I don't think so. I think that's it. Well, to clear happy skin. None <laughs> yes. of that red angry bug stuff. Oh, yeah. No kidding. So. All right, everybody. All right. Thank you for listening. We'll speak with you next week. Until then. Take care, everybody. Bye.